there are a lot of forgotten guitarists out there. Everyone's head of the big names, Van Halen, Hendrix, Jimmy Page, etc. But here's a guitarist who has a fantastic tone and fantastic ability who sadly seems to slip through the cracks of the music world. Roy Buchanan, The Life and Death of the Man Who Said No to the Stones by Mitchell Classic Rock. Roy Buchanan inspired Jeff Beck, Gary Moore and Joe Bonimassa, but suffered a life of addiction and died a bluesman's death. I'm going to try and stick a few songs by him in the links. He has an absolutely fabulous tone, and it's a great shame he's forgotten. If you can recall the final shot in Martin Scorsese's 2000 Irish, six Irish mob music The Departed, then you've experienced the genius of Roy Buchanan. Moments after Mark Warbord's Massachusetts State's Police Sergeant Dignam guns down Matt Stamen's mob roll, mold, Colin Sullivan, the camera pans round to capture a rat scurrying along the balcony rail of Sullivan's apartment. That's an annoying rat a rodent reaches centre of frames. Roy Buchanan's blues fueled instrumental of the country standard Sweet Dreams bursts into life. Sweet, this was one of his highest moments, but I think the song mentioned further on in this article that Jeff Beck and Gary Moore have covered is, for me, his finest moment. The Messiah Will Come Again. That's eight or nine minutes of brilliant guitar playing that very few people are capable of topping. There's no um, shredding, no tapping. I have no problems with these, by the way. I'm not sort of... I don't think they're a pro problem to use in music, and I quite enjoy the sound of them, but... Buchanan is doing something very, very special. And if I can get a link in, you'll hear it. Born in Ozark, Arkansas in 1939, Leroy Buchanan was a master of the Telecaster. He certainly is. It's, he's battered like Telecaster that appears on nearly all his recordings. Is He pushes it to get sounds out of it. You couldn't even believe you'd get out of it. This article also mentions Danny Gatton, who is still reasonably well known, but I'll get round to him. He's not exactly in the league of Hendrix or Van Halen for recognisability either. But um, Buchanan tended to play full on volume through a Fender Vibralux, which is a, is a quite old and very desirable Fender amplifier. You won't be getting much change out of several thousand pounds if you buy, buy the originals. Even the reproductions cost. Quite a bit of money. His guitar for, is from the, an early Telecaster, and um, you be if, if you have one of those hand, handy, you know, and it's in good condition, get ready to retire if you want to sell it. To understand Buchanan's hip, hip, impact on the history of the Fender Telecaster, you need to explore the guitar's origins. Leo Fender, a lap and steel and amplifier manufacturer based in Fullerton, California, began working on a solid body at electric concept late in the 19, in the late 1940s. Crucially, Fender didn't play guitar himself, which is, is, is true, and it's all something I found funny, that the the, the person who made possibly the, one of the two biggest guitar companies on earth didn't play guitar. He approached the project, though, as a problem solver with pragmatism. Existing guitars had big hollow bodies. They had a tendency to squeal with electronic feedback. And then mahogany necks would likely is not snapped if the guitar was dropped. Anyone who's owned a Gibson guitar will know that, know, the, know that and know to be very careful to put them in the case straight away. And even there, they can break. Chris and the S guy, the new single pickup guitar was not your classic overnight success. Introduced at a trade show in 1950, it was with one wag double get toilet street with strings. But later on, people like Buchanan and many blues players picked it up. In fact, Jimmy Page is more associated with the um, sort of Les Paul. He used the Telecaster quite a lot. He, the first Led Zeppelin album is mostly a, a 1959 uh, Telecaster, not a Les Paul. For Buchanan's part, he mined the Telecaster's lap guitar heritage, manipulating the instrument's volume and tone controls. He also uses string benders on some... Sort of songs and tends to use a tone control to, to emulate wah wah sounds, palm muting, etc. etc. There is a story that he turned down the um an offer to replace Brian Jones and the Stones in 1969. If it's true or not, well, it's more debatable, but by that point, Jones was effectively useless to the Stones, really. 
Buchanan sort of never really moved past a low level of fame. He had a moment in the 70s where he was quite well known. But he died before he could ever be really, really become famous. And unfortunately, he was addicted to alcohol, which limited his ability to really get to the heights. He died, unfortunately, on the 8th August of 14, 1988. Um, there is a, a lot of debate about the way he died. As this article notes... There's claims that he was beaten by the police after arrest for a public intoxication. Um, it was ruled a suicide, but who knows? In any case, I've been giving that small biography of the man. I'm going to try and stick some links in for you so you can hear what's most important about a musician, their music.